The Play's The Thing, with your host, Judy Sleed. Special guest, Donald Kennedy, painter and sculptor. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. I love when you say that, Lee, I really do. So, Donald, I'm so happy that you came to see me, and when you, they say that you're a painter, you don't mean, you don't paint houses, do you? I have painted houses. <laughs> you have? <laughs> outside or inside? Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Now, what do you prefer, to paint houses or when you have a, an easel? And I prefer to paint paintings. Or to paint paintings. Yeah. I see you have a lot of beautiful paintings here. So, how long have you been doing this? Well, I'm 68 years old, <gasps> and I've been kidding. and I've been you doing. You look like a little kid. <laughs> and I've been painting, ever, I would say, at least 50 years. Is that right? Ever since you were very little. I grew up in East Hampton, and my first teacher was Victor De Paul, a man who did the vignette drawings that are still used in the New Yorker. The little the women with the little tiny drawings with the, in ink that are done, girls with umbrellas and things like that, and they're stuck throughout, and they still use them. Mm -hmm. And I used to draw with Jackson Pollock. You did. And. Uh, but your paintings are nothing like his. <laughs> well, it's a, I have a different concept, but uh, yes. basically all painting is abstract. His paintings. All painting is abstract. You Only God that. paints in three dimensions. The minute you take a subject and put it on a flat surface, it becomes abstract. Is that right? I never looked at it that way and I never knew that. And the thing is that uh, uh, when you have, when you uh, transpose a three-dimensional object into another medium, it becomes abstract. So if I did a sculpture of you and I did you what we call realistically, if I did it you in clay, I would abstract you because I'd be changing you from flesh and blood into clay yeah. or into stone. Well, I, I wonder what I would look like then. Well, we'll have to try that one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, and where would you put it if you would? <laughs> you have we'd have to cast middle, you in bronze. <laughs> <laughs> middle of the square so everybody Absolutely. could see this beauty. <laughs> so uh, I picked up this paper. I wonder if this was you. It said the Donald Kennedy. American Dream Artist of the Month. Did you know that? Donald Kennedy, Ingrid uh, Ingrid uh, said, told me she, that she wrote it, but she, I haven't seen the paper. Yeah, but she said you were born in New York City. I was born in New York you City. You just told me East Hampton. I grew up in East Hampton. Oh, you grew up. I, I see. Okay. And you were hit by a car? Mm-hmm. Who did that to you? I was going to church. I was coming out from church on Park Avenue. I was uh, ten, nine years old at the time, I was hit by a car, and my father said he didn't, he didn't want me to be on the streets of New York. So he moved my mother and I out to well, East Hampton. Well, were you hurt? What? I had a concussion, oh. and I have little pieces of Park Avenue gravel still in my, in my head. Oh my gosh, and you remembered who you were. And I, had, I came out here, and yeah. my mother hated it. But uh -huh. uh, I came out to the Hamptons, and it was an entirely different place than it is now. There were um, only I about 3,000 people here, here around, and we knew everybody from Montauk to Bridgehampton. And now you hardly know anyone. I hardly know anybody. <laughs> you could go down the street, and everybody knew you, and they knew your parents and everything else. Were you an only the, child? I was an only child. So no wonder they were really very uh, careful about you and everything, because uh, you got hit by a car. That's why they moved here. I think the thing there were, that, I think there were that, horse and buggies here, but I bet. No, well, there were, but not. There <laughs> not was, then. <laughs> it was only, not, it oh. was only 1945, so it was not that oh, long ago. Not that long that, ago. <laughs> well, it was long ago for a lot of people, but it was, they still had cars. But oh. uh, I think also the thing that motivated my father was I was a cesarean baby, and, uh, and it was, it's lucky that I'm alive today. Is that right? And what I happened? Used that, well, I was cut in the cheek. So I have pictures of me with my hands in mittens uh, in the crib where the, they caught me when I, in the cheek when I was being born. So, uh, oh. 
my mother always said she knew who her baby was. So in any <laughs> event, it was the two crises, the major no crises. Yes, there's a little X here. Oh, I always legs. told them I was well, from Heidelberg and did check with <laughs> dueling with it. <the laughs> Identify you by a scar. <laughs> but anyway, that's, oh my I think it just all frightened my father enough, so he wanted me here. All those, and you're still here. That's wonderful. Well, I left so, and I came back. You left? No, I mean, you're still alive. I mean, oh, yes. I mean, <laughs> Hopefully, when you were yeah, born. <laughs> <laughs> when you were born and then you were hit by a car. But you well, just, I was 10 years old when I was hit by a car. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a lot to happen for a, to a little boy. Mm -hmm. And you became a painter right away. No. Well, I always knew that I wanted to, to paint. I liked it. I grew up, when I grew up, I liked to draw and paint. And I think on the right side of my brain, much to the chagrin of my father, who thought on the left side of his brain, he was a mathematical genius. He oh. could write music like you'd write a letter. He played the bagpipes and he performed in Carnegie Hall, I mean in the Radio City Music Hall in New York. He spoke five languages. Oh he my. developed the steamship company of India, Sindhya, which is still in existence today. And he worked for the India Supply Mission during the, when, before India became a country. Uh, country. And he was uh, uh, a major general in the British Army, so. Oh my, he hardly had time for anything so, uh, else. So, you know, uh -huh. I, when I grew up, I had to wear a jacket to, di to go for dinner and things like that. Uh-huh. So, uh, and your mom? My mother was a, a secretary for a very famous diet doctor, which I don't remember. And I didn't know until she was, uh, until I was about 24 years old, that uh, she grew up in a German neighborhood in Brooklyn and spoke fluent German. And a man stopped the car one day and asked my mother in German uh, for directions. And she answered him in German. And that's how I found out. She, and the only reason I could think of that she didn't speak German was because of the Second World War. Yes. But your father spoke all those different languages. Well, he spoke, his first language was Gaelic and his second language was, was uh, English. English. And he went to Edinburgh University and, uh, you know, Heifetz, Piatigorsk. Uh, Primrose and Piatigorsky were primroses in his class, the violas. Well, it's very interesting, but now let's we'll talk, talk about, about you. <laughs> well, I grew up in East Hampton, uh -huh. and I went to East Hampton High School, and I worked for a place called Books and Music, Don Brader, right across from Guildhall. And Don Brader was one of these strange people that had collected first editions of books and used to sell them. And I know we sold Lady Chatterley's Lover, to the Sag Harbor Library for $3.50. It was an autographed first edition. Anyway, he had a gallery in the back, and Pollock, Klein, de Kooning, Motherwell, and still Pearl Fine used to show in that gallery. And that's how I started to know about abstract artists. And, and, the, you know. and I heard somewhere that you did something in the theater? I had a stage scenery business in New York. I did sets for plays. Did you? I built... Uh, the sets for One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest at the Mercer Hainsbury Theater in New York. I did uh, Jungle of Cities for Joe Papp. Uh, we did the sets for Shelley Winters, who just recently died, her three mm -hmm. one-act plays. <coughs> As a matter of fact, the first, the second painting I sold out of a gallery, I sold to Shelley Winters and Anthony Franciosa on their honeymoon. Really? And the first painting I sold mm -hmm. was out of the same gallery and that was to Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn. And she was pregnant oh. and freckled and sunburned and not the, the ravishing beauty that you <laughs> see. I was the happiest woman I've ever seen in my life. And I was in my early 20s and it was really, really exciting. I'm sure it was. But uh, yes. then I worked for the Signet Gallery, Alfonso Osorio, Elizabeth Parker and John Little had a gallery and, and they showed. Art gallery. Right here in the East Hampton. Mm -hmm. And they showed the, new, the European abstractionists as well. Mm -hmm. So all the people, because of the Second World War, the artists uh, in the, uh, were unable to exhibit because there was, Europe was in, in ruins and they had no market. So the market was here in the United States. So people like Ferdinand Leger and, uh, and uh, would come over here and they would exhibit at, at the gallery and a lot of 
uh, Matu, another very famous abstractionist, would show. And um, uh, Frederick Kiesler used to show. I eventually was an apprentice for him. He made uh, the Museum for the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Endless House. He did the famous play uh, Emperor Jones for, for the Juilliard Company. And this, when this curtain went up, this was in 1929, when the curtain went up, the scenery changed from the time it went up to the time the curtain went down at the last act. And it was all done manually. No hydraulics, no electrics, all people moved in unison. How do you know this? Because I talked, I learned at, because I uh, went to school and learned theater uh, sets and plays, but I also worked for Kiesler. And he talked about it. It was very exciting. He was a very mm -hmm. exciting, a little Austrian about this tall, a mm -hmm. tyrant, but a brilliant man. And he introduced uh, a lot of the uh, European artists to the American artists at the time. Mm -hmm. That's why people like de Kooning and things like that would keep in touch with, the, with their roots in Europe. Well, I would like everyone else to see these beautiful paintings. Which one shall we start with? Well, let's start with this plow. This was a plow that was on Deep Lane in, mm -hmm. uh, in Amagansett. And uh, there's an organic farm over there uh, on Deep Lane. And this plow was there, and it's a handmade plow. And uh, what I mean by that is it was hand forged. When they built this plow, I'm a sculptor, yeah. so when I think of things in terms of sculpture, I see it as it's handmade. There's nothing on this plow that doesn't need to be here, just like a good piece of sculpture. And mm -hmm. they forged the metal, so they, weld, they welded the pieces together by heating them and hammering them on an on a anvil. Mm -hmm. And when they made the split tracers for the, mm -hmm. for the reins, they would take a piece of steel and split it and break it and then curl it up so that they could put the leather in for the... Oh my goodness, I, and the I'll holes do that were when punched. I go home. <laughs> and, they used to, and they didn't have drills that were big enough so they punched holes in the steel. Wow. Anyway, this is this... Uh, and one other thing I wanted to talk about with this plow is uh, it took me a great deal of time to paint it uh, because it had different... I didn't want it just to be a portrait of a plow. I wanted to integrate as a painting. As a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. This plow, when you plow a field, I learned about agriculture by doing farm equipment. I, I'm just amazed how, how well you know everything about this. It's, uh, you seem to be interested in a lot of things. Well, they plowed the field in a circle. Oh. And the modern plows have what are called rollover plows. They go up the row and they turn the plow over and they plow the other yes. side of the row. This one so, went in a circle. And this mm -hmm. probably was drawn by horses or oxen. Uh-huh. Very nice. And uh, is, this, uh, is this for sale? Yes. And you put this, uh, when you show your paintings, this is well, one of the Well, it has been exhibited at the Hammer Galleries on West 57th Street in New York. Harmon Hammer, you know, the, the famous... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was the one that brought us together with, with uh, the Soviet Union when... Uh, we were having difficulty in the Cold War. He, made, he broke down the barriers in the Cold War. Well, his gallery, I'm, I, I showed uh -huh. it that when I showed my drawings there as well. So, it's acrylic, <laughs> is this way. one of the earlier pieces? This is a painting that was done, I would say, about 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Mm 